email is caesar at faithinplace.org and I'll write it in the chat. And without further ado, thank you, Cindy, for uh, giving me the opportunity to share that information. I think it's important to leverage your experience so that you can continue to go. And I wanna help you do that. Well, thank you. And I'm writing my email in the chat now. That was awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. I, I think people might be interested to uh, hear where you are on your journey now. Uh, sure. Uh, let's see. I recently um, came back from Ghana, West Africa on a Fulbright Fellowship. And a Fulbright Fellowship is a really good like opportunity to travel the world and uh, do research or do a project. In Ghana, I was DJing. I was doing research between the US Embassy radio stations and music uh, production studios there. Uh, and before that, I graduated from Northwestern University and I graduated in learning sciences. I, in my studies, I design programs, design curriculum and work with learning uh, virtual technologies. So uh, that's kind of where I'm at. And I, I'm uh, talking to Brian at this moment, who is our director and we're possibly considering a grant to have me full-time position. So I really do hope I could get a full-time position at Faith in Place soon. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> Thanks, Sydney. Thank you. So it's been so great to have uh, Cesar as our uh, director this year. Uh, as you can tell, I'm more the grandmother age. And uh, so all the new learning technology and uh, apps and uh, uh, special things that you can do on a computer now, I, I have learned so much in the last four weeks from Cesar and from uh, Sydney, our Earth Ally, and also from the wonderful students in the program. So um, I even have cahoots on my phone now so <laughs> yes if you're like me and you don't know what that is you'll have to ask a kid true true well thank you sydney i'm gonna go to the north and west suburbs because i also have to give them the tea i have to let the eco ambassadors know they have to leverage this experience so they could get scholarships and get money out here that is available for them so um i will see y'all very soon again i hope that you reach out to me too please do that have a great trip. All right, bye-bye. Thank you. All right, well, I'm so glad that uh, we got to hear from both those men and uh, who have a great vision for the program and for Faith in Place. Um, it's been, it, they've really been wonderfully supportive of this pilot program and uh, helped us out in all kinds of ways. So. I, I'm so glad that they could be with us. But I know that um, if you came tonight, you probably are most interested in hearing from the eco ambassadors themselves. And so we're going to do that for a few minutes. Um, this is a leadership program and we ask the students to think of themselves as leaders, to act as leaders and to uh, put together a project that would help to make this community more healthy, a healthier community, and a more environmentally just community. And um, we got some fantastic uh, projects. The projects themselves um, are not, have not come to completion yet because we're gonna be uh, continuing to take them out to the community and share them with houses of worship and with other community groups. But we asked them then to take the big project that they had researched and spent so much time on and compressed it down to a presentation that they could do in just a few minutes and share the essence of it, give you a flavor of their passion for environmental justice. So I'm gonna ask each of them to do that. And the first, um, the first presentation that we're gonna have is from a, a young woman who was with us until this afternoon when she, her college visits uh, took her away. She is actually in New York and although I, Really, uh, it was sad that we had to be virtual. The fact of the matter is, it allowed us to keep our class together even when she had to go out of town, when, uh, when we were, had to be uh, absent for different reasons, we were able to catch up because we were all virtual. So pretty cool. And she was even able to send her project and her explanation of, and of it virtually. So Sydney has that and she's going to share her screen now and we're gonna hear from
Hi, I'm Kessie Colmenares, and my leadership project is bringing composting to community hotspots throughout Champaign-Urbana. So my project was how composting can mitigate the effects of food waste. And food waste is not just wasteful, uh, but it also causes a lot of issues in the earth and for the environment, especially for the atmosphere, because when left to rot in landfills, food waste will produce methane gas, which is a greenhouse gas, which causes the earth to heat up, which is one of the major causes of global warming. It also affects people on a personal level because around 216,000 pounds of food are wasted per family. Um, and because 216,000 pounds of produce alone are wasted per family annually. Um, and the amount of emissions caused by the production of wasted food equals the emissions caused by 37 million cars, which is a lot of cars. Um, but also the amount of wasted food is around 30 to 40 percent of the food in our communities, which is 30 to 40 percent of our food that could be used to feed people who are food insecure. Additionally, people waste 216 pounds of food per person, which is a lot of food and can add up throughout the years. So ideally, everybody would be aware of the food that they uh, buy and the food that they consume and would cut down the food that they buy to make sure that they're not wasting too much and that people compost the food waste that they do produce. Um, but that can, it can be harder to get started on that. So a way to continue that is to start composting community compost bins in communal areas such as scouting troops, uh, schools, libraries, and faith communities as well. Most foods like apples and eggshells and newspapers can be easily composted, and composting can easily bring communities together. Um, and it can also lead into community gardening, which is one way to make the uh, cycle from food to waste to food um, come full circle. But it's also important to think of all the little ways that you can make a difference and come together as a community while doing so. Thank you. Clap, clap, clap. Thank you. Uh, Cassie is going to be a senior at Academy High School next year. She was the uh, oldest student in our class. And um, so we're, we were very pleased to have her. She was also the only girl in the class. So she was terrific. Um, so the second presentation that we're going to have is by a pair of our young men, Cameron McCullough and Calvin Dooley, uh, did a project that they're going to tell you about. And I'm not sure which one of them is going to share their screen, but one of you is. <laughs> okay, I got it. Okay, so to get started, our big problem was energy waste. We, uh, okay, let me try that again. <laughs> Mia and my partner Calvin, we both had the problem of uh, energy waste and we we're wondering how our church, I guess wouldn't say benefited from this problem, but helps cause this problem. So we decided to conduct an energy audit. Okay, so the problem um, was wasting energy and cause and uh, something that it can cause is um, causing pricier bills and environmental destruction by climate change. <clears throat> um, to find out how we're wasting energy, we conducted an energy audit. Um, it was pretty simple. It's kind of just a kind of like a checklist of things. You just go through the list. Our energy audit is exactly this one that's presented on the screen which I will put in the chat if you would like to conduct an energy audit within your house or place of worship. Okay, so some solutions that we came up, we came up with five solutions. Number one, stop leaving unused things plugged in. 
uh, make sure that a uh, HVAC and thermostat system are up to date. And then three, we don't always need to have the lights on. Four, try to seal as many visible cracks as soon as possible. And then the fifth one, make sure all light bulbs and LED or CFL lights. Yeah. Okay. And how you can help would be to conduct your energy audit within your house or place of worship, which I think I said that already. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. So. Oh, I guess we got rid of this screen for now. <laughs> be glad to have questions for the uh, students but we thought we'd wait until all the presentations were done how about that thank you this share link again that's great um, um i told you cassie was gonna it goes to academy high school and uh Ka calvin and cameron you want to tell uh people where you are going to go to school yes i will be in ninth grade attending at centennial high school and I will be in 10th grade going to Central High School. And as you saw in the program, they both go to St. Luke CME Church. So they yes. had a perfect project yep. together. And we hope that they will be sharing that project with other houses of worship and helping them do energy audits this next year. Yes. Um, our, our next presentation is gonna be by Ian Pleasure and Ian uh, is also going to be a ninth grader this next year. He just moved from Urbana to Champaign. And so at this point, we're not even sure which high school he's going to be in unless, unless Ian, you've figured it out by this evening. But I'm going to ask him to share his uh, project. Uh, he came into this uh, program very interested in a, in a environmental issue and has done some work and research on it and, and I'm excited for him to share it. Well, here goes Evan. Um, my project was on littering. Um, here in a second I'm going to show you guys a couple of pictures and I want you to, I want you to think about how they make you feel. Okay. Give it a second, this computer's old. <laughs> See, those pictures you just saw, how did they make you feel? They made me feel disgusted by how much trash there was. This kind of thing is horrible and smart starts with the smallest thing. Littering can start in many different ways. Whatever the case, if you see it happen or you currently are doing it, you should try and hold on to it till you can find a trash can. Three Three ways littering can happen are there might not be enough trash cans or they might have dropped it on accident or some people might not just might not care about the environment at all. Um, if a community of faith in Champaign is already helping the environment by doing neighborhood cleanups, maybe yours can do it too. You can help by picking up any trash you see or asking the city for garbage cans in the area or ask the city to come and clean the streets more often. We should all work together to help end littering. Thank you. Thanks, Ian. Thank you. Um, Ian interviewed uh, someone for, from the church that does the neighborhood cleanup and uh, learned a bit there that he's hoping to share with other houses of worship. Uh, and now we are going to wind up our presentations by having Sam uh, Laufenberg share his. 
um, Sam is going to be a junior at Academy High School. So he and Cassie uh, knew each other before. Uh, Sam, share, share your presentation. Sorry, I was muted there for a second. Um, how to make public transportation better for the environment. Well, I'm going to start by giving you a little background on my presentation. I have been a gearhead for many years, and I know way too much about anything vehicles. So when we started out on these projects, naturally, I decided to do something with them. I soon came across an article that said that the MTD in Champaign-Urbana, Mass Transit District, was getting two hydrogen buses. And here we are at this project. What is the problem with Champagne Mass, with the public trans, trans, transit in Champagne? The problem is that the transportation in Champaign, Illinois emits carbon dioxide, and that is harmful to the environment and contributes to climate change and global warming. What can we do to decrease carbon emissions from the bus system? Well, at first I couldn't think of anything and then I remembered, oh wait, we got a grant. The first thing we can do is to slowly implement hydrogen buses into the system. Champaign can do this because they recently won the grant. Well, now you're thinking, how can we make a difference in this? Well, I'll tell you how. We need to be writing letters to Congress to convince them to allocate more money to the FTA for hydrogen buses. That's how the, the Federal Transit Association, also known as the FTA, got the money from Congress and they gave the grant for the hydrogen buses. And this is the phone number of the Champaign, a Champaign House representative. Represents the area we are in. We also need to call up the FTA, Federal Transit Association, sorry, administration, and request more grants for hydrogen buses. The phone number for the FTA is also on the screen if you would like to write that down. So here's my call to action. And for all the Presbyterian ministers out there, this is for you. I charge you to go out into the community and make a difference in the environment. Call for companies to be better for the environment. I charge you to go forth and make a change in the world. Go forth and be kind to the environment. Thank you so much, Sam. I love the little Presbyterian joke at the end as well. <laughs> um, one of Sam's references was his pastor. And uh, so we're hoping that his pastor gets a chance to get the benediction from Sam. Uh, Sam also, as you can tell, did a lot of research and uh, will have uh, facts, figures, and statistics to share with, with people as they uh, learn about these, uh, as learn about this opportunity. And, uh, and we've talked a lot about how important advocacy is for environmental justice, that not only do we each have to do the best ourselves, but that if we're really called to use our voices to make the public space a place where all people can live with the benefits of clean energy, clean water, clean air, um, and a clean landscape. So, um, so I'm really glad that they took the advocacy part to heart. Questions for our advocates from our guests here tonight? You can either raise your hand in the participant box, maybe, or you can type it in the chat box, or you can just raise your hand and I'll call on you. Any questions? Okay, I'll ask a question. <laughs> I'll ask a question. Um, we had a lot of speakers come in from the community and from uh, uh, across the state. Would you like to tell about maybe one of your favorite speakers? Cameron? 
uh, Senator Scott Bennett. <laughs> um, <laughs> even though he talked for a really long time, he was probably one of the more interesting ones. That was Sam, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Because I had a lot of interesting questions kind of about government and um, being a politician, I guess. And he answered a lot of those in the best way he could. Um, I'd like to answer that as well. I'm going to agree with Cameron on the Scott Bennett. So if I'm correct, Ms. Shepard, you set him up to go from 2 to 2.30. Am I correct? Let's just say uh, he filibustered for 35 minutes. It was amazing. He had so much, so much knowledge on everything, really. He taught us that politicians are literally everywhere. I, I agree. He was, he was really, he was very interested in his topic, very passionate about public service and, and politicians. And, I was very interested in the, what the young people were thinking. So that was really cool. That was cool. Is there another question? We have some questions in the chat box. Yeah. Oh, good. Oh, good, good, good. Uh, Ta Taisha Jones says, what was the most challenging part about the program after learning this program would be conducted virtually? Oh, that's a good question. Um, let's ask um, Calvin to answer that. So the most challenging thing for me was the fact that, okay, so I got to meet new people, but I didn't actually get to see them in person. So that was kind of a challenging thing for me because mm -hmm. I didn't, I like, I, like I, I, was, I got to meet new people, but I didn't actually like get to meet them in person. So I guess, I guess that was like one of the most challenging things for me. Thank you. It, it was definitely different. Uh, and it had advantages, but that was one of the disadvantages. Here's, an, here's another question. I'm curious to know what was something that each student took away from this program and how will they use what they have learned? That's a good question to put you on the, all on the spot. Should we all answer that or? Yeah, I think that'd be great. Everybody who's okay. answering it. Okay, well then I'll go first. Um, one thing that I learned that I took away from this program was, um, so when, like before I was in this program, um, one thing that I thought, one thing that I didn't know was like connecting with the environment. I, me personally, I thought it was just like, going outside and being with animals but from what I took from this group from like from this program was like it's not just all about really animals it's just really just about being outside like doing bike uh doing like you know like walking doing uh, bike rides and stuff like that so that's that's what I took from it thank you Calvin Sam did I see your hand oh uh, yeah I think that one of the most interesting things that I took away from the this program so we watched a video on some farm animals and it apparently like seven pounds of grain produces something like one pound of beef I just found that amazing at how little that amazing amount of grain produces and this was a uh, video on how how we can do more sustainable farming, doing more grass fed. So found that very interesting. Thanks, Sam. Cameron. Um, one thing that I took away from this program would be in every organization, there's politicians. <laughs> Even in the simplest organization like environmental environmental justice and environmental protection agencies, there are politicians everywhere trying to advocate for what's right, I guess. <laughs> Excellent. Great answer. Thanks. Um, 
here's another here's another question. What are your goals after the program? Are these long term long term goals or short term goals? Your answer in the question. You get to pay. Okay. Well, long term goals. I would like to create the first zero emissions jet. Oh wow. <laughs> um jet that could probably travel faster than the jets we currently have and will be very safe to the environment so yeah thanks sam uh long-term goals i'm gonna buy one of those jets <laughs> <laughs> but it'll probably be expensive <laughs> goals. <laughs> yeah i felt i had to make that one um long-term goals i would I'm excited and hopefully to go to college and just see what's going on. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, Calvin? Um, one of my goals uh, would be probably to study more into this and maybe make this one of my majors, maybe. Oh, so. Excellent. It's good to hear. That's good to hear. Um, I'm looking through the chat box and I did, I, I think I've got everyone said, other than the favorite speaker, did any of you have a favorite topic? Advo uh, advocacy. I, I, I yeah. like that. I like that one. Ian, what about you? I like the one on food waste. Yeah, we, we talked about food justice and sustainable farming and uh, f sustainable food systems. That was probably my favorite, but I, I think we've got some budding politicians here in the room because uh, mm -hmm. that, that's wonderful. Advocacy really got some love. Uh, uh, the Sharon and Jack uh, have put in the chat box. Thank you. We'd like to follow up with some eco ambassadors to come and help us at our church. So best wishes. So that's neat. We've got a we've got a invitation for a return engagement, guys. Let's do it. Thank you so much for the good questions and and uh, the good answers. It's it's nice to get to uh, hear, and I, I would, I'm glad to get to share a little bit of their unscripted personalities. They were really delightful. Um, the next item on the program is that we had, I could not have done this program without a wonderful Earth ally, uh, Sydney uh, Guillory, who is a senior at the University of Illinois. Um, and I was so happy when uh, I was sent her application because I had met her earlier. The Chicago Eco Ambassadors have come to Central Illinois several times, and on one of those times, I was really impressed with Sydney, and so I was glad to have her work with me, and she was terrific help in all kinds of ways. So I I just like to uh, open the floor to her and and have her tell you a little bit about her experience at, in the Eco Advocates program and now as an Earth Ally. Hi everyone, uh, I'm Sydney. Um, I'm the Earth Ally and Youth Facilitator for this group. And um, I'm just gonna talk a little bit about um, my time with Faith in Place. Um, I've been with Faith in Place for five years now. This is the fifth year. And when I first started, I was um, an Echo Ambassador myself, learning about you know environmental justice and stewardship and what that really meant to me. So I always knew I enjoyed nature, but I didn't always see the connection between um, the environment and myself or uh, how environmental issues affected my life. That sort of thing kind of took a backseat to other obstacles until I was given, you know, chances through Faith in Place to learn about those problems. Um, essentially, I think working with this program made me realize that your environment is such an important aspect of your life to pay attention to. Um, learning about environmental justice has affected things like my college major, similar to uh, Cameron. Um, it's affected the groups that I give my time to and how I see issues like in the city and um, just the world around me. Uh, Faith in Place, I honestly think it's really shaped my life in a way that I can say I'm unsure how I saw it before because the environment is really just so important to me now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, being environmentally conscious and aware is something that I believe is very complex and contains multitudes of avenues. So 
I've always been really grateful for the opportunity Faith in Place has given me to explore those avenues. And um, in my five years of being in this program, I can honestly say that this year, this summer, um, it's been my favorite. Um, it's really given me so many opportunities to explore those um, environmental avenues. I, I love Champaign. I love the city and its people. So I just really loved working with this group um, here in Central Illinois. Um, this year's Echo Ambassadors, um, on top of just being fantastic learners and students, um, just always such a good time. Um, I think you, you all handle being on Zoom better than tons of college students that I've had to work with. Um, always just really eager and responsive. They took what I had to say and what Cindy had to say and they applied it back to their own lives like really easily. Um, it's been truly such a pleasure seeing them learn about the environment in the same way that I got to when I first started with Faith in Place and playing a part in that has just been a really great experience for me. Um, Engaging with the environment in a healthy way, I think, is such a great gift, um, whether you're just out existing in nature or doing what our group did and sharing their ideas for leadership projects with people in the community. Um, it's, it's an amazing thing to be able to like learn and know about um, the environment around you. And I'm really grateful to Faith in Place and Cindy Shepherd and this year's Echo Ambassadors for, you know, making this program in this uh, last month such a wonderful learning experience. Um, and I just hope that, you know, you all keep uh, my experience and their experiences in mind when you all think of Faith in Place. So, yeah. Thank you, Sydney. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, although it's been great to meet uh, in person, I, Sydney has been in Chicago this time, and so yeah. she's, but she's been with us every single day, and uh, not only herself, but we've gotten to meet her sister who's in the Chicago program. Uh, <laughs> She's, it's really been great. I, I feel like my family's just expanded a little bit more and, and it's really been wonderful. So I, I can't say enough wonderful things about her and her uh, teaching ability, her learning ability. And um, I uh, can't wait to see the bright future that she forges ahead. Um, so, so thank you all. I, I'm so glad that uh, you could come be with us this evening. Um, Valerie, uh, is our Valerie is our um, development coordinator from the Chicago office and she is going to tell you about how you can uh, continue to uh, support this program in the future. Valerie? Yes, hello, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> I'm not used to waiting this long to speak, huh? Like in our meetings. <laughs> But um, thank you all so much for, um, it's such a pleasure to be here. I've been with Faith in Place for about a year, and this is probably the program I've been most interested in because I um, enjoy working with youth. I think we really rely on you all. You are our future, and believe me, look at the world around us. We really need you. <laughs> um, to um, help us figure things out. Um, of course, we'll work with you. I don't want to put all the pressure on you, but just thank you so much for participating in the program. Um, thank you, um, Cindy, for doing such a great job with it. Um, and uh, I'm just, I'm happy to be a part of it. We, um, you know, we want to continue this program. We'd love to do more youth programming too eventually. So that's something I'm a big proponent of, but we just wanted to let you know that we are, this program is fully funded by um, 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 donations from donors. And uh, a lot of people donated this year. Thank you to all of you who, who, don't, who donated to make it possible this year. We even had extra tech costs to make it virtual. But um, we just wanted to let you know, if you ever want to make a donation now or any time this year and you want, to, um, you want to target it for the 2021 uh, Lake County Eco Ambassador Program, that is totally possible. So I'm going to put in the chat box, I'm going to put a link up that you can use. But you, I know you all know Cindy, you can always tell her too. I just wanted to make sure you all know that if you wanted your donation to go specifically towards youth programs, we are able to do that. And um, we appreciate your um, support uh, all in all the different ways you've given us support this this year and going forward too. So thank you so much. Thanks, Valerie. And I think I beat you to it with the uh, link. So if you can oh good check in the chat box and if I got it wrong, fix it. 
thank you for being here. And, and seriously, thanks to everyone who has supported us with your uh, donations, your generosity, and, and also your good thoughts and prayers and energy that you've sent this way. It's just been terrific. Um, we're almost done. And I, um, I, would, I would like to present a digital certificate to each one of these wonderful young people today. Mm -hmm. Um, unfortunately, my name was spelled wrong on the digital certificate, so I'm having them redone. <laughs> and I'm going to have them printed out and bring them to your house. But uh, I, I do want to say, I'm just going to call, I'm just gonna call on you uh, one by one and say how much I appreciated you being part of the program. And I'm going to do it in alphabetical order, so I get to start with Calvin. Uh, Calvin, I, w I was so... Uh, that you uh, came to this program. I don't, I don't think that you uh, knew what you were getting into at first, I don't think with the environmental business, <laughs> but, um, but you were here and uh, every day showed up uh, early when the, as soon as his driver's ed uh, was over, he cl clicked right in. We never, we never had to wait a moment. Um, and then when he was here, he was so great with cooperating with the other students and, and bringing fresh ideas. And um, I'm going to tell the story that, that he didn't tell earlier. And that is the, the first week we talked about migration stories and our migration coordinator, Princess Harris, came. Uh, and Princess uh, just loves nature. She loves all living things and one of the things that she loves is snakes and so she talked to, she talked a little bit about finding a garter snake and how beautiful it was and so on. and nobody had ever had ever played with a snake before but the very next week calvin came in and said you know i was i was doing my lawn mowing business and i saw a couple of snakes and i just decided i'd pick one up and they're not slimy and they don't bite <laughs> so, oh my gosh <laughs> i'm so happy that because of Princess, he picked up a snake for the first time. They're really wonderful creatures. So I'm, I was very glad to have you here. I, I hope I see you next year and in between. And so then the next person on the list would be, uh, I think Sam. L is Laufenberg and Sam, um, I had met when I uh, visited at Academy High School. Uh, to talk about environmental justice and to talk about advocacy. Um, so it was great. I think that I was there the morning that Sam got back from the Drivers Ed Bureau. Do you remember that? You walked into, you walked into the assembly and um, Mr. Connerty announced that uh, Sam, who has been talking cars for his entire career here at Academy High School, has his own driver's license. And everyone just cheered and it roared because they knew how much uh, driving meant to you. So I was so happy to have you here and for you to bring that uh, focus on vehicular responsibility to a project uh, on uh, transportation for Faith in Place. Thank you so much. A and then the next person I want to talk about is Cameron, who is a, ha, who is a bright star and who we figured out today is going to be running for president in 2044. He'll be off to be president. <laughs> um, he, is, he is quite a politician and quite a go-getter. Um, he came to the that, but... ambassador program already. Yeah formed a small business of his own and uh, uh, being very involved in the video ministry at his church. So uh, he helped us uh, several times to get our computer stuff in order. And um, the thing I, that is the most outstanding thing about Cameron to me is that he just has these huge, huge dreams. The, uh, the completely emissions-free airplane, that's, that's not even his biggest dream. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fabulous, and I, and I know that those dreams will take you far. And the last person, I saved the best for last, I want to talk about Ian, because um, Ian has had his, his camera off, and he's, he's kind of shy. And 
um, it wasn't easy for him to join a group where he didn't know anybody, um, even me. And he, he faced his fears and he did it every single day. Uh, so that was really awesome. Uh, he was a great participant and, and contributed to the program. And I think that uh, as they got to know each other, that he also uh, made some friends here that uh, will be part of his high school career. I, I certainly hope so. Um, Ian came in uh, focused and I, I the, he said, I don't like to do presentations, but when he did his presentation, you heard the passion in his voice. Um, you heard how much he cares. And I think that uh, because of he cares like that, he communicates it and he's gonna do great things. So it was really great to work with him. So I'll print out your certificates. I'll put them in a nice envelope and I'll bring them to your house and leave them socially distanced on your front door. And I want to thank each and every one of you for being part of the program. I want to thank so much the parents and teachers and pastors and boosters who uh, made sure that the, they knew your support was there and that you thought that this was something important for them to do. Um, I want to thank uh, you and for being friends of these young people and friends of faith and place. Um, young people are really leading the environmental movement now. I mean, I think sometimes we say they're the leaders of the future, but it's truly happening all over the globe that young people are showing us what needs to be done and how urgently we need to get to it. So um, it's a pleasure to work with these leaders and um, I look forward to uh, I look forward to continuing to do so in the future. Thank you all and good night. <laughs> good night. Oh, my camera's off. <laughs> bye bye. Everybody. Bye. Bye. Uh, good night, Taisha. Good night, Janelle. Thanks. Good night. Matthew and Rachel. Good night, Sarah. <laughs> good night, Jerry and Joanne. And good night, Sydney. Bye. Bye. Um, do you, let's get together next week sometime to tie up loose ends and so I can fill out your timesheet for next week too. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> See you then. Talk to you next week. Have a great weekend. I thought that you. Didn't you? Yeah, it really did. It yeah. really did. Yeah. And, and so have a good one. You too. Bye. Bye.